Good evening, algebra students. So we are leaving chapter two and headed directly into chapter three. So let's go ahead and get started. We are working with inequalities in this chapter. And for today's lesson, I'd like for you to be able to define, describe, and graph mathematical inequalities. So um, for the first one that we have, we have the greater than symbol. Your greater than symbol is going to look like this, how it has kind of an arrow pointing to the right. So just as an example, this would be x is greater than 2. For greater than or equal to, this, it's going in the same direction, but now because of the or equal to, it has half of an equal bar underneath of it. So this would be x is greater than or equal to 4. Then we're going to have our less than symbol. It's going to go in the opposite direction. So it's pointing to the left. If we put in our variable x, I don't know, and then say seven, just to give us a number. And then we also have a less than or equal to symbol. So that's going to look like this. Once again, it's the less than symbol with the half of an equal bar. So if we needed to, we could put in our variable and a number as well. So I'll just put in zero for that one. X is less than or equal to zero. We're going to practice writing some of these out now based off of word problems. So in this first one, it says all real numbers less than negative seven. So this all real numbers needs to be represented by something. So I'm just going to choose, you know, like some variable, I'll just say in for numbers, and I want them to be less than negative seven. So first I'm gonna write in, and then I'm going to refer to my less than symbol right here and then I'm gonna put in my negative seven. So n is less than negative seven or all numbers less than negative seven. For problem B, it is all real numbers P greater than or equal to 1.5. So this P is just letting us know that this is the um, letter that they want us to use for our variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in P. And then it says P is greater than or equal to. So that is this symbol right here. So P is greater than or equal to, and then my number 1.5. Moving right along, it says the sum of T and nine is less than negative three. Well, the sum, remember the sum means addition or at, um, adding. So I'm going to add t and nine together. So that's my first part, t plus nine. And this needs to be less than, so here's my symbol for less than, negative three. And that's it for those. Just remember to break it down word by word. And you might have to read it through a couple times, but that's okay. That helps us understand what's going on in the problem better. Um, okay, next we have Identify the solutions by evaluating. Remember, evaluating basically means substitute in and simplify. That's all this really means. When we see the word evaluate, it just means substitute in a value and then simplify your answer. So it says, is the given number a solution to the inequality? So we have 2x plus 1 is greater than negative 4. That is our inequality. We're trying to figure out, is negative three a solution to that? Well, we're gonna take this negative three and substitute it in for the x. So my first step is going to be two times negative three plus one is greater than negative four. So I just substituted stuff in. Now I'm going to start following order of operations. So two times negative three is negative six, then carry down my plus one is greater than negative four. Let's keep simplifying on the left side. So now I have negative six plus one, which is negative five, is greater than negative four. Now that we have this completely simplified down, we have to ask ourselves, is negative five greater than negative four? And no, it is not. So we're going to say like x and then 
not a solution. So we know that negative three is not a solution, but we don't know about one yet. So let's take one and substitute it in and see what we get then. So we have two times one plus one is greater than negative four. Now let's start simplifying. Two times one is two, then plus one is greater than negative four. Then we have three is greater than negative four. Is a positive number greater than a negative number? Yes, yes it is, so that is correct. So I'll just write yes next to it. Finally, we're going to determine if zero is a solution. So we're taking the zero, substituting in for the x. So two times zero plus one is greater than negative four. Two times zero is zero plus one is greater than negative four. One is greater than negative four. Is this true? Is one more than negative four? Yes, it is. So we know that that is a solution as well. So here, negative three is not a solution. One is and zero is. So notice within inequality, you have many solutions or a solution set. Let's do one more where we're evaluating or substituting in a value to determine if it is a solution or not. So here I have negative eight and I'm gonna substitute it in. So I have negative with a parenthesis, uh, plus negative eight is less than nine. Okay, so first I'm gonna worry about what's in parentheses. This negative is just hanging out over to the side, don't worry about them. So I have negative and then three plus negative eight is gonna get me negative five is less than nine. A negative of a negative is a positive, so now I have positive five is less than nine. And is that true? Is five a smaller number than nine? And yes, it is. So I'm going to put a check mark and just say yes for that. For letter B, it has six. So I'm gonna take that six and I'm gonna substitute it in now. So I have negative parentheses, three plus six, it's less than nine. Take care of what's inside of your parentheses first. So three plus six is nine. So I have negative parentheses nine is less than nine. Is negative nine less than nine? Well, yes it is. So this is also a solution because it, it works. Now I have one more uh, number to test and see if it's gonna give me a solution. So it's C is equal to negative one. I'm gonna take this negative one and stick it in for the X value. So I have negative and then parenthesis three plus negative one is less than nine. On the inside of my parentheses, I have three plus negative one or positive two. So now I have negative and then with a two on the inside is less than nine. This is gonna be negative two is less than nine and that does in fact work. So on this one, we had all three that did work as a possible solution for um, this inequality. Okay, flipping your paper over to the back, we have talked about how to write it out in symbols, but we can also graph inequalities. Graphing inequalities is um, when you use a number line to kind of visually display the information. So in problem A, it says, what is the graph of A is greater than or equal to two? The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is just go ahead and number your number line. So I'm just gonna go zero, one, two, three, four, five. And make sure that one of your notch marks matches the number that you have here. So if the number were 55, I would wanna have 55 somewhere on this number line. And you do not have to start at zero all the time. You can start kind of in the middle of the numbers on your number line if need be. Okay, so now I need to uh, determine if I'm gonna use an open or closed circle. What does that mean? So you are gonna use an open circle for, sorry, you're gonna use an open circle for uh, less than 
or greater than symbols. You're going to use a closed circle for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbols. So in this example, I have A is greater than or equal to 2. So I'm going to go to the 2 on the number line and I'm going to mark it. I'm going to put a circle on it. Because there's this or equal to underneath of there, I need to take this circle and close it or fill it in. Now I'm asking myself, which side of the number line has the numbers that satisfies this statement? A is greater than 2. Which side has numbers of higher value? Well, it's going to go to the right because 3 is greater than 2 and 4 is greater than 2 and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to kind of fill that in a little bit and we'll go into the right there. Okay, after that, it says, what is the graph to 7 is less than y? Something that I want you to do, if you have an equation, or sorry, an inequality, where the variable is on the right side, go ahead and rewrite it so this will now say y is greater than 7. So this is the same statement. Nothing's different there other than the order that I wrote it in. So notice the arrow is still pointing towards the seven in both of those. I just rewrote it because it's easier to have your variable on the left side. So now I'm going to number my number lines. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And notice that I just started in a spot where I could get my solution on the number line. Now I'm going to go to 7 and I'm going to put a circle on it. This one needs to be an open circle, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And then I need for y to be greater than 7 or all the numbers that are bigger than 7. So that's going to go to the right. Okay, for our last problem, it says, what is the graph to x is less than or equal to negative 6? So let's number our number line. Okay, and then we're going to go to the negative 6. Put a circle on it. Now I'm looking at my sign. Should it have an open circle or a closed circle? That's what I'm asking myself. Well, because it has the or equal to symbol, that half of an equal sign at the bottom, it needs to be filled in. After that, I'm looking for numbers that are less than that value. So I'm going to the left because these numbers have a smaller value than the negative six. So let's take those examples and do them backwards. Instead of being given the expression and we graph it, now we're gonna be given the graph and we're gonna write the expression. So here's our graph. It says, what inequality is represented by this graph? Notice where the open circle is. So that's letting us know right off the bat that we're gonna have um, not an or equal to symbol, basically. Uh, what I like to do is just automatically write a letter down. So we'll just choose Y for our variable. Then we're going to look at what direction the arrow's going. Notice how the arrow is going to the left. I'm going to make my inequality go to the left or point to the left, I should say. So now it says Y is less than and it's going to be strictly less than because this is an open circle. Then I need to figure out what number I put in. So I look at the graph and this circle is above negative one. So I write that in and I have Y is less than negative one. For the next example, it says, what inequality is represented by this graph? Well, once again, just write a variable down to get it started. So I'm going to say M. Then I'm looking at the direction of my arrow as well as whether or not this circle is filled in. 
So notice the arrow is going to the right. So I'm gonna make this arrow point to the right as well. I'm also going to put my or equal to symbol underneath of there. The reason I'm doing that is because this circle is filled in. So when it's a filled in shaded circle, I need the or equal to symbol. Finally, I'm going to look at the number that this dot is above and it's negative four, so I'm gonna fill that in and I'm done with that one. Okay, for problem C, it says what inequality is represented by this graph? So I'm just gonna put in a variable to get that started, letter K, then what direction is the graph going in? Notice how it's shaded to the left. The arrow is pointing to the left. So I'm going to make this point to the left. That's like an arrowhead right there. That's a way that you can think of it, I guess. Now, do I need to include the or equal to symbol part of it? Yes, because this right here is shaded in. So now I'm gonna put a line underneath. So now I'm at K is less than or equal to. And then what number is that shaded circle over? It's over a one. So I'm going to put that one in there. Alrighty, we are almost done with notes. Our last one is writing real world inequalities. We don't realize sometimes um, how much math really does surround us and inequalities is no exception to that. So here we're just going to look at some real life inequalities that we use on a regular basis. It says what inequality can be used to represent each image? Be sure to identify what your variable represents. So here it says speed limit 55. Let's go ahead and define our variable. That's typically one of the easiest things to do. So let's just say that L is going to equal the speed of your car. I guess I should be more specific and say legal speed of your car. <laughs> But anyhow, now we're asking ourselves, should the speed of the car, so we have L and we have our 55, we know we're gonna use that somewhere, but should this L be less than the 55, greater than the 55, or something else? So L, once again, is representing the speed of the car if it were to be driving legally. So, we want the speed to be either less than 55, because it's okay if you drive 40 miles per hour or 50 miles per hour, that's less than 55. So I'm gonna do my less than symbol. But also it's okay if you drive exactly 55. So I'm going to put the or equal to symbol in there and circle my answer. So your speed should be less than or equal to 55 miles per hour. For problem B, it says you must be this high to ride. So here we're talking about height. So I'm just going to um, identify my variable. H is going to equal height of rider. The person who wants to get on this ride. And then ask yourself, the height compared to the 44 inches, are they allowed to be taller than 44 inches? Yes, they are. So height is able to surpass 44. Are they allowed to be exactly 44 inches and still ride the ride? Yes, they are. So height is going to be greater than or equal to 44. And we're done with that one. So that's all for our introduction to inequalities. If you have questions, make sure to bring them to me in class tomorrow. Bye.